In this video we're going to take a look at an alternative way to build a passive greenhouse. The conventional way would be to use um, a large volume of water which is heated with the sunshine and it's, and it's supposed to let the heat out at night. Um, I've just finished a video that proved, I think, uh, mathematically that that wouldn't really work. Uh, so in this video we're going to take a look at uh, an alternative method. Uh, as you can see we're going to use compost as the medium to generate heat in the greenhouse rather than um, solar gain from the sunshine hoping that it'll be enough to put out in the winter. So what I've got here is uh, about a cubic meter of fresh compost. Uh, you can see it's steaming um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hotbed in the greenhouse instead of putting up the, the um, tank of water. All I, do, well, all I did was uh, chuck all the fresh compost. It's been uh, heated up okay for about a week, week and a half. So it's up to 60 degrees. Uh, and I'm going to drop it in the bed here now. Uh, and then what I do when I put the first layer in is we add a board round to make make the, um, uh, what would you call it, the, the bed higher and we put a, a good load of compost in. I actually had to use more um, compost than I was in the bin but I had, I've got plenty lying around. So after we put the compost in, it's kind of raw compost, we top it off with um, finished compost or soil. Uh, this is just a finished compost. Uh, it, it kind of makes the top a little bit uh, less stinky um, and it kind of s makes an ins it seems to make an insulation barrier as well between the, the, um, the air and the compost because you want to try and keep that compost hot. Right, when that's done, uh, I'm just going to chuck some old um, bubble wrap. This is uh, old packaging bubble wrap over the top uh, to try and keep as much heat in now as we can to ac activate all the bacteria because the bacteria need heat to start working and then they should uh, cause a runaway heat effect to, to continue heating the, um, this, this block of soil that we have here. Once it's all wrapped up, um, I'm putting extra bubble wrap on this because I'm trying to keep as much heat in as possible. But once it's all wrapped up, um, we'll leave it for a couple of days and then uh, take the temperature, see what it's running at. back now and uh, we'll just shove a thermometer in and, and see what the temperature is. There we go, 40 degrees. The compost was 60 degrees in the compost bin but I, I think probably because it's laying flat um, and it's got all that soil on top it's, it's not as hot. Uh, we can begin using the um, hotbed straight away what I do is I'll put um, courgettes and sweet corn and patty pan um, seeds in. They will not germinate below 20 degrees C. Uh, they will just rot in the pots. Uh, it's early March, very early March. Um, 
So I wouldn't even attempt to plant these in the greenhouse because the temperature wouldn't be high enough and they would just sit there and rot. Um, so what I've done is, uh, to test this out, we'll chuck some bubble wrap back over and see if the hotbed keeps the seeds uh, warm enough to germinate. Okay, we'll leave that for a bit uh, and come back um, in about a week to see if uh, anything's happened. Uh, we had some really cold weather. Uh, you can see here that um, if you look a second here, uh, there's ice on the inside of the greenhouse film. So we've had some proper cold nights, um, maybe uh, minus four, minus five. And if you look at the thermometer, we've got uh, 20 degrees, just about 20 degrees on the bed. The thermometer's up inside the plastic, it's not inside the soil, it's just inside the plastic. So it's, it's um, showing the temperature of between the bed and the uh, plants. I've unwrapped the uh, seedlings and you can see that they've all germinated pretty well. Um, seven days is pretty good going for sweet corn and courgette to, uh, uh, seedlings to, to germinate. So the temperature's perfect for germination whatever the weather does outside. You can just see down in the right hand corner there the um, the th thermometer sticking out the soil. It's not actually um, in the soil, it's above the soil. That's the uh, courgettes. We've got some uh, flats of um, buckwheat and that's patty pan. And at the end there is the sweet corn. You can see it's just, it's quite small but it's germinated. That's seven days after we um, put them seedlings in. See how the hotbed's doing. Uh, we have more flats and um, seeds germinating in there, and we've got a temperature of uh, just a shade off 30 degrees. The weather's been um, cold to say the least. We're, we're getting uh, 68 degrees at night and um, 10 degrees during the day, 12 tops. Uh, it's, it's kind of dull, cold day today, and uh, the the uh, hotbed been staying at 30, 35 degrees on a warmish day, um, never drops below 20, and it's uh, six weeks since I put that in. So, in conclusion, really, um, a hotbed passive greenhouse uh, costs nothing to do. Whereas you have to buy equipment. If you wanted to do the um, solar tank of water, that uh, the big tank of water in the greenhouse, uh, to be honest, it doesn't work. And the geothermal, where you have the duct under the floor in the ground, and it's supposed to bring heat from the ground, that doesn't work either, to be honest. Um, and they both cost money. You've got to uh, install fans or water tanks or something like that something like that, uh, a hotbed system, you just need uh, a good few barrel loads of compost. You really could um, start a hotbed in January and start germinating um, your seeds then. Seeds need temp a, a, a bit of warmth to germinate, um, but once they've germinated, they can tolerate usually some cooler conditions than uh, than the requirement for germination. So you can take them out of the of the hotbed, and um, they'll they'll be fine in the the rest of the greenhouse. Now I haven't done any measurements or uh, to see what the hotbed does for the temperature in the greenhouse. Uh, my greenhouse is not finished. It's got a gaping hole in the top. Um, that'll be my next project and possibly the next video. 
um, to cap that off um, and I really need to double glaze uh, the greenhouse to get so at least some form of thermal efficiency so I would say that the hotbed doesn't really um, heat the greenhouse at the minute um, but what I'll do is I'll do some testing later on and maybe find out if uh, the heat generated by the compost will actually keep the um, greenhouse above uh, freezing. I'm pretty sure it would if you had a, a reasonably well ins insulated greenhouse. It certainly would, it's going to do a better job than the uh, geothermal fan under the ground or the hot water or the water tank uh, in the greenhouse. Um, because your compost it's, it's at six on this one in the greenhouse it was at 40 degrees inside the compost uh, my comp normal compost heaps are running about 60 degrees so you've got a lot you've got a, a, a very good temperature differential to start with to feed heat into the greenhouse so I would say it's definitely uh, the cheapest and best option for putting some free heat into your greenhouse Okay, uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, like and subscribe to see more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next one.